Hey folks, hope you're doing well. Welcome to another little video. And that weird in between time between summer and autumn. We're wearing shorts, but if we stop, it's pretty cold. <laughs> no plan where we're going today. We've just been making our way out of uh, Rochdale and the good old Lancashire Moors are starting to open up. And two shakes of a cat's tail or whatever the uh, expression is, we'll be up into those hills. Let's go hands free and uh, I'll chat to you about today's little ride and topic. <laughs> So we're just heading down here from, I suppose, Whitworth Way, down in towards Bakeup. And lots of options there. We can go off towards Rottenstall. We can go up over towards Burnley. And uh, we can head a little bit further north up towards Sharniford. And then over into Calderdale. I think probably today, I fancy Burnley Way and then uh, we'll just see how the legs feel. Plenty of options. And despite the fact that I've got a million and one other things I should be doing, could be doing. No, I should be doing, I'll be honest. The prospect of a kind of dry and vaguely warm bike ride this afternoon was just too tempting. Too tempting to pass up. And one thing's for sure, whatever direction you take out of Acup involves some pretty decent climbing. So uh, yeah, hills next. I fear. <laughs> Straight on to Burnley. It's just a little bit of lunchtime traffic. It's a midweek day. Uh, 12 o'clock on the dot. So I'll be busy maybe for half an hour, hour or so. And then we should get back to some nice quiet roads. Big pull now, I think, up towards ooh, Weir, perhaps. And we got some great cycling ahead of us. A bit further up here. Whew. Oh, wow. That's a big pull up out of Bake Up. We're in uh, the parish of Cliverger here. And this is where you start to get, well, sweat in your eye <laughs> and your contact lenses. But more importantly than that, <laughs> some absolutely stunning views. Just opening up all the way into the Yorkshire Dales and Forrester Boland. It is such a treat being up here on a bike. Twenty past twelve, so we're still getting a little bit of the lunchtime rush, but it's quite enough to be able to, you know, relax a little bit. I'm glancing over my shoulder every now and again, but really just to enjoy the spectacular views which are opening up now. And this road we're about to, or this section we're just about to, to navigate is like one of those those crazy sort of top gear roads where you just 
motoring along, doing 30 miles an hour, and we're still on the hoods. Uh, you know, taking all the time in the world, but absolutely flying and. And why wouldn't you on these kind of roads? Absolutely superb. And we'll take a left here, I think. A little bit of climbing now and then, I think a little bit of uh, undulating terrain and then we'll get these spectacular views opening up over Burnley and a uh, big fast descent if memory serves. 14 miles in, we're up at 1200 feet here and We've already done nearly 1,300 feet of climbing. I'm not even seeking out hills on this ride. It's just half of the course in the Pennines. And my legs might disagree, but I wouldn't have it any other way. Oh, right, stop talking, Martin. Get up this hill. Just going past here, the little park up for the singing ringing tree, which is like an art installation, and there's a fancy word for it that I've forgotten now. But a great little spot and just fantastic views. I hope this comes across on camera all the way into the dales. I can see all of the three peaks. No, I can't. I can't see Ingleborough. I can see Pennington on one side and this road is just absolutely bonkers on a bike i mean look at this so i'm going to stop bothering get on the uh, drops and just enjoy Whoa! 43 45 <laughs> Man, that is so much fun. And we'll just have a few seconds while the lights stop screaming. <laughs> this is quite a deceptive little pull up from Burnley in a headwind <laughs> it's the top section here of the Cliverty Gorge looks wild up there never been up there hiking it's on the to-do list it's been on the to-do list for about 30 years <laughs> Oh, 
So we've got just an absolutely lovely, maybe four mile or so, descent now into Tomadon. The valley really kind of narrows here, closes in a little bit. It's a block headwind, I hope you can hear this, so it's not going to be fast today. But a little bit of time to ponder where I'm going to go next. And I suppose talk to you about the uh, topic of today's video, which is really all about the, the sacrifices that we make as cyclists to make enough time, make enough space in our busy lives to, to get out on the bike and do this thing that we enjoy so much. I was up uh, last week, last weekend actually, in the Yorkshire Dale cycling with a friend and didn't have the cameras out, although there was an absolutely amazing road that we took, a new way into uh, Dentdale that I'll have to go back with the camera and show you as it was really wonderful cycling. But uh, we were reminiscing about years and years ago where we were cyclists but uh, we were also climbers, rock climbers and did a bit of winter climbing as well and I really got into that and there was a, a period uh, where I was going to the climbing wall a couple of times a week and I built a little climbing frame, climbing wall in my garage and was really just obsessed with planning climbing trips, going on climbing trips, thinking about climbing trips and uh, I distinctly remember the trip where it all just came to an abrupt end and it was just after my my oldest boy was born up in Scotland on a winter climb in Glencoe and I just had this moment of thinking what, what are you doing? This, this just isn't worth it, the time sacrifice, the element of risk. I mean I wasn't a particularly good climber and I was just starting to push it and push it and push it and you know climbing with people that were more capable than me and I just thought it's not worth the sacrifice and that was back in 2008 and I haven't really climbed since and I don't regret it for a moment. I just got to a point where the sacrifice was, was too much. I, was, I just wasn't getting enough out of the climbing to justify the time and the, you know, the mental bandwidth it was taking up. So thankfully in the, I don't know, 16 years or so since I stopped climbing. I've never had the same feeling about cycling and I suppose one of the, the nice things for me, although I do go on you know, multi-day tours and I like to go on long rides now and again, I think the majority of the cycling I do is like, like the ride today, it's a few hours here and there, just enjoying all the benefits of getting out and getting a bit of exercise. And the sacrifice is kind of manageable. I don't feel uh, any great risk to my personal safety when I'm on the bike. Nowhere near the same as hanging off a bloody rock face or a bloody ice wall up in uh, the Cairngorms in the winter. So it's a kind of a level of sacrifice that I'm prepared to you know, to accept, I suppose. The other things I should be doing, I could be doing, uh, are less of a priority than spending a bit of time on the bike and cycling allows me to forge new friendships and sustain old friendships and keeps my head on the right way, I think. So, these are all, I think, sacrifices that are worth making. 
But I do think it's worth asking yourself that question from time to time. Just to make sure that the thing that's eating into your, your time, your ability to do other things, is genuinely worth it. Well, that's a lot of blathering for a, a descent, but hey, it's got us to... <laughs> Almost in some of them. And for some reason, we've picked up a hell of a headwind here. And that was uh, hard work going down there. I've been uh, wittering at the camera, so I haven't decided where I'm going to go next. I think we'll go down to Hebden. And then... Maybe out towards Salby. Let's see. Not supposed to rain, but the last time I came out on the bike, it wasn't supposed to rain and got absolutely drenched. <laughs> That's the, uh, the Met Office uh, app as well, which is, I thought it was better than BBC, but I'm beginning to wonder now. Anyway, welcome to some of them. Market Town. Slightly poorer, rougher cousin to Headland Bridge. Apologies to anyone watching this at Resin Todd. For what it's worth. I absolutely love this place. Okay, left turn quiet. How is it still a headwind? We're just on the, uh, the valley road now, heading to Hebden. I don't ride on this too much now, and... A couple of years ago, they... They resurfaced the road and I swear they've made it worse. Well, at least for cyclists. Now I'm running about 80 psi in my tyres today. So, not super firm. And uh, it's just a horrible road surface, this. The vibrations go off. It's only about a four mile stretch though maybe another mile down to Marlon Road before we turn off so it's pretty short lift Glad to be off that road. So this is uh, Maiden Road. And you can go up Crag Vale. So I'm going to head up and over towards Halifax and Salby. So it's all right, a few miles onto the ride, I suppose. and uh, get some nice quiet roads. Fair bit of climbing now. Heading towards the, uh, the mighty steep lane, which uh, definitely lives up to its name. <laughs> Uh, 
Oh dear, we're in the easiest gear already. The shame, the shame. It's a, a sharp little pull up from Mytham Ride. And then in a minute or so, it just opens out and you're on this amazing sort of viewing platform, balcony road, just able to look down onto the valley. And like all these little punchy climbs in the Pennines, it's so worth it. smell something there. <laughs> Luckily we're not following the manure tractor. Welcome to Steep Lane. It's featured on a couple of videos I think previously. Always on tired legs when I'm here. Uh, today's no different. Lovely views across to Studley Pike here. It always feels such a privileged position up here, knowing how busy things are down in the valley. And it just feels like you have the whole place to yourself on these high level little lanes. Views for miles and I suppose when I'm around here, heading back homeward, I know the ride's in the bag. I've still got quite a bit of climbing to do. Still got a fair few miles to go, but I can't help it. Thoughts start turning to that, that big cup of tea. But equally, you're just savoring these stunning Pennine Vistas. So we head down towards Craggies, picking up the uh, Cragvale Road up to Blackstone Edge, and I need my hand back now. <laughs> So yeah, coming out today, I mean, I've certainly sacrificed a bit of productivity and I've made my day a bit longer when I get back. I've got things I still need to do, but it's been so worth it to have a couple of hours today out on the bike just to get all that fresh air, get the endorphins going, tackle some silly hills. <laughs> And, as I may have said in a previous clip, I think if you keep asking yourself that question, is the sacrifice worth it? And, you know, your cycling or your hobby, whatever it is, is not having a detrimental effect on other areas of your life. I mean, the honest answer, is it worth it, is I think for all of us, we don't know. You know, we don't know what other interests we may have found if we went into our cycling or our climbing or whatever it is. We don't know what other areas of our lives may have advanced more, be that careers, relationships. You know, I don't know other things we could have done. Nobody really knows the answer to that. And you know, summer's over now. It'll be all winter bikes and mud guards and dicey conditions now in the UK and you know we don't we don't get too many summers in the grand scheme of things we don't get too much time to 
to live our lives, to enjoy the pursuits that we get into. And I say, never sit on the fence. If you have the choice to go for a bike ride and there's no compelling reason not to, get that bike out, man. And get out there and enjoy. I'm not sure if I brought a spare battery with me. I know my battery's just about to run out. If I have, I'll check back in with you in a few minutes and just share with you the final amazing descent that I have on today's ride. It's an absolute cracker. Descending off the top of Blackstone Edge. A little bit of a drag getting up there now. A couple of miles, I don't know two and a half, something like that. But yeah, if I've got some batteries left, I'll just check back in with you in a second. Whew. So let's just enjoy this amazing descent. There are a couple of bits of the road that would definitely catch you out if you didn't know it. Generally, it's a pretty decent road surface. And these views, I mean, it's just spectacular. Well, it was such a shame there that that car pulled out in front of me on the way down off Blackstone Edge. So I'll have to say that uh, that uh, flat out descent for another video. So just coming around the lake. I think I'll sign off for this video. Just remains to say, stay safe out there. Take care and happy cycling. And if you're not making too many sacrifices to get out on your bike, go for it. See you out on the next one. Bye for now. <laughs>